Welcome everyone to this episode of Lifelong Vitality. Today, we're gonna to be talking about intermittent fasting, which I know is a hot topic with lots of questions. And so we're gonna go over what it is and what benefits you can get, how to do it right, and all that fun stuff. But first, let me introduce our, our guest today. Chantal Ray is the author of the Amazon bestseller, Waste Away, The Chantal Ray Way and Fasting to Freedom. After struggling with her weight and with autoimmune disease for years, she began interviewing women for their eating and lifestyle tips. She used these interviews to develop her Chantal Ray way. She has also created multiple programs, tools, and free resources to guide readers through her revolutionary approach to weight loss. Her podcast and website serve as a beacon of hope to the many people who struggle with sustainable weight loss. And you are basically an intermittent fasting expert, would you say? <clears throat> yes. <laughs> Good. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. So thanks so much for being here. I'm excited to uh, learn all about it. Thank you so much. That is my passion. I, I feel like it changed my life. So I just want to help others change their lives. That's so cool. I think, uh, I think that's a lot of times in the, in the health space, um, where so much of the motivation comes from and, um, you know, it's, it's a life-changing experience, whatever that is, uh, whatever journey that is for the individual. And it's like, well, if it helped me, it's got to help so many other people. So I love that. That's right. So let's just start maybe with some basics. What is intermittent fasting? Can you just kind of explain what that means, what that term means? Yeah, so intermittent fasting is an eating pattern that cycles between periods of fasting and periods of eating. And it doesn't specify like you should eat this or not eat this. And so a lot of people do, I would say the most popular would be a 16-8, meaning you'd fast for 16 hours, you would eat for eight hours. And a lot of times people add in doing fasting for like a 24 hours, like a full 24 hours. So that would mean like you'd eat at three o'clock. You wouldn't eat again until three o'clock the next day. And if you think about fasting has been a practice throughout human evolution, like ancient hunter gatherers didn't have supermarkets. They didn't have refrigerators. They didn't have food available year round. And so sometimes they couldn't find anything to eat. And then sometimes they found tons to eat. And so, you know, I think that it's, it makes sense for you to not just be eating, you know, every three hours. I mean, I am so anti eating every couple of hours. It's not even funny. And if you yeah, think about fasting is right? <laughs> people promoting, you have to eat every two hours and it's, that's totally opposite. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, if you think about fasting is done for spiritual reasons, Christianity is big on fasting. Islam is big on it. Judaism, Buddhism. I mean, every religion has some sort of fasting involved. And so I just believe that the other thing that I would like to say is that now what they're, they're saying, but nobody is going to be able to kind of change it now because they're too far along. I don't know if you've heard of something called time restricted eating. Um, so they're now saying that Intermittent fasting is when you fast for more than 24 hours. So if you went from three o'clock to three o'clock the next day, then you would be actually doing intermittent fasting. They're saying time restricted eating is when you do a daily fasting during the day. So that means if you just fasted and did an, you know, 16 hour fasting and eight hour eating window, then that would be now called time restricted eating, which Again, it's like, okay, we're this boat has sailed, right? Yeah. Like everyone knows intermittent fasting and they're just trying to add in. No, it's now called time restricted eating, but I still call it intermittent fasting and I go that route. I'm glad you threw that in there though. So if anybody starts researching it and they're like, that's not what it's being called now, or they get a little confused now, they'll know to research either one and it's the same thing the way they're yeah. doing it. Okay, so that's there's different methods too. So a lot of times, you know, one of my new favorite things that I've started doing is a lot of times people do like they say for once a week or twice a week, you just do a 24 hour fast. And then some people say, um, they call it a five, two method, which I'm totally against. Um, but what, with that method, you only consume 500 to 600 calorie calories on two non-consecutive days of the week and you eat normally the other five days. Oh. And to me, that is a restrictive mindset. Now I'm counting how many calories I'm eating. So 
I don't do that. I don't count any of my calories. Those days would be harder too, like way harder emotionally, physically. Yeah. I eat when I'm hungry. I stop before I'm full. I eat what my body's craving. I eat real whole foods. I don't deprive myself of anything that I'm eating. If I want something, I have it. I just eat it in my eating window. So what are some of, I mean, you kind of just named some of them, um, just even mentally and emotionally, but what are some of the benefits of fasting, intermittent fasting specifically? Yeah. So it drastically affects your cells and your hormones. And so when you fast, there's things happening on a cellular and molecular level. So when your body is going to adjust, because what you're doing is you're now going from eating you know, every three hours or whatever you were eating before. Like grazing and then, throughout the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and one of the reasons why I think that intermittent fasting works so well is because you, you're actually, most of the time, you're eating less calories. Because if you're eating only one meal or you're eating only two meals in a day, most of the time you are eating just overall, you're eating less food. Um, but the biggest thing that you're doing is, is that you are going into fat burning mode instead of glucose burning mode. And so the, the best analogy that I give people is this, I say, okay, if I had, let's say I had a hundred dollars in my pocket right now, and I went to the store and I found something for $80 that I wanted, I'm going to just take the hundred dollars and I'm going to pay that $80 that ever I owe. But after that $100 is gone, I now need to go to the bank, I need to go to the ATM, and I need to go get more cash out if I didn't have any credit cards, right? And that's the exact same thing that your body does. What your body does is it first goes to glucose, and it says, okay, my body needs energy, let me go to glucose. So that's kind of what you have in your pocket, right? As soon as you say, okay, now I need to go to... I'm out of glucose. So now your body needs to go to its fat stores and your fat stores is like you physically kind of going to the bank. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's a good, that's definitely a good analogy. It helps visualize, kind of understand what's happening. So it's really important uh, to give your body that break uh, from digestion and give it the, the time to uh, focus on other things as well. Yeah, it, it really does. I mean, the, the, fasting has so many benefits as far as even healing your body. And what, what we've seen there, there's tons of health benefits that have been backed by science. Um, the, the benefits kind of, in my opinion, happen mostly what, what I've seen is like after 24 hours and then after 72 hours. So there's like certain health benefits happen after support 24, then after you know, 48, then after 72. And then I've seen even some that are after five days of fasting. And so I don't want to scare people because, you know, I started off by doing an eight hour aiming window and then I moved it down to a six hour eating window. Then I incorporated some 24 hour fasts. And then after that, I incorporated some longer fast. And so one of my girlfriends, it's funny because she had a, a really bad Achilles problem and she tried everything. She went to physical therapy. She went to this, she did that. She then decided to do a five day water fast. Her Achilles was better than it's ever been. Like that was the only thing that literally, you know, helped it. And the biggest thing is that it really helps acute inflammation you know, because your, your body, it helps your body to start fighting off infections and chronic inflammation can have serious consequences for your health. And so if you look at all of the, the chronic conditions, you know, that people have rheumatoid arthritis, heart disease, you know, everything is that inflammation is a huge part of it. And so fasting has scientifically been shown to decrease levels of inflammation. And that's why it's so powerful. Mm. So what does it maybe tell you about your body if you are unable to stop snacking between meals? Because <laughs> uh, it, 
I, I feel like when you kind of get into this and you are eating the right foods and your body is kind of resetting, you can go long periods of time. Um, you know, even without fasting, fasting, we're just talking about intermittent fasting. You can sure. go several hours, three, four, five hours in between meals and feel totally satiated. But maybe if you're not at that point yet and you're used to eating that every couple hours, like um, wh what is that telling you about your body that needs to, to change maybe? Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with hormones. I know for me personally, there's different times of the month that I am able to do even longer fasts, even sometimes for me, like, you know, once I get to like hour 20 or something like that, I'm kind of like, oh my gosh, I, I need something. And I'm like, why am I, I've gone three days without eating. Why am I, you know, why am I acting different right now? And so I think, especially for women on the type, the time of the month that you're at, I did, um, I actually have done something called the Fasting Reset Summit, and this answers so many questions, but it, one of the questions we answer is, for a woman, what is the best time of the month for you to do if you're trying to do an extended fast? Mm. Um, and one of the things that I've seen with people is a lot of times is if you do like a six day fast, let's say you do like a six hour window like I'll do a, let's say five days a week, I'll only eat in a six hour window. Then one day I might do a 24 hour fast. And then one day I might eat in a nine hour window, something like that to kind of just keep things changing up. But, um, you know, I don't know, HGH, which is human growth hormone is a type of protein hormone that is central to many aspects of your health. Mm -hmm. And so that has a, it, it's kind of shown that hormone to be involved in your metabolism, your weight loss, your muscle strength. And so studies have found that fasting could naturally increase HGH levels. And so that's another kind of benefit of why people want to do fasting. And it's been shown that fasting for 24 hours, it's like 24 hours or more significantly increases your level of HGH. You mentioned um, changing up the schedule and I was going to just want to go back to that for just a second because um, one thing I think when people are doing different lifestyles, different diets, trying different things, they really get married to um, a structure, maybe a little bit too much. And I feel like that's a lot of times where people will hit plateaus, where they'll start depleting their body, where women start beating themselves up because guys have success with, you know, whatever macro county or whatever it is, you know, and, and they're so strict about it and they're so intense about it. And then they're, they're super muscular and women are just like, our bodies cannot do that. And so I think the concept of, Hey, start with one um, and you're saying you maybe kind of work your way into it first of all but then once you're there don't expect every single day to be exactly the same like I think our bodies we we want to view them like computers but they're not <laughs> we want to view them like machines but they're not there are days where like you just said with our, our cycle hormonally you're gonna need more food or maybe you had a really stressful day and you're needing maybe some more calories that day because the stress you know, your body just needs more sustenance and that six hour window isn't going to work for you. So maybe that's a nine hour window that day. So I think that's a really important point to really, especially if women are maybe hitting plateaus or feeling frustrated that, that this isn't working for them, that shaking it up can be really, really helpful through, you know, maintaining it long term. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, there's a balance between, you know, disciplining your body and saying, this is what we're going to do. Right. But then there's a whole other balance. Like some people, this is where people get like, well, you know, it's kind of, if you look at it as an extreme, right? Like over here, it's like, I'm going to eat whatever I want. I don't care. I'm doing whatever my body tells me. If I feel like eating this entire cake, I'm going to do it. Right. And then over here on this extreme, is like, I'm going to be so strict and I'm going to, I'm not doing this. I'm not having an ounce of sugar. I'm not going to do this. Right. Yeah. And I think that where you need to be is right there in the middle, right. Where you're saying for me, I, most days I eat in a six hour window. I know that for me to maintain my weight, I've learned that I need to eat in a six hour window or less, but there are some days, usually one day a week, I eat in a nine hour window, but I, 
I really listen to my body and it may be maybe twice a week I'm doing that. Not very often that I do. I just went on vacation. We got back from Mexico and when I was there, I just decided I was going to eat when I was hungry and I was going to stop when I was full. Most of the time when I've gone on vacation, I've eaten in about an eight hour window. This time I probably ate more in like a 10 hour window. I didn't eat tons. I didn't overeat, but that's what I decided to do while I was on vacation. So I'm, I am a, I'm passionate about intermittent fasting and I'm pretty strict most of the time in the sense that I I know that what works best for me is that six hour window, but I really just listen to my body. If I'm extraordinary, my stomach's growling and I'm ravenous that day, I'm probably going to be eating, you know, but it's just, a, you've got to just be balanced. And I'm definitely don't be on one side and don't be on the other is kind of my motto. Yep. I think that um, balance is key and saying listening to your body is so important because a lot of times like, what is it? that makes us really want that food? Is it our body signaling us or is it just that we're bored or is it just a habit, that sort of thing? And so you may be actually uh, able to go a lot longer than you think um, based on your actual body cues as opposed to just like a habitual thing that you're used to doing because you know, you're home and you're passing the, the, the pretzels or you know, whatever it is. Um, okay. So you mentioned uh, a couple times uh, working around your cycle and um, longer fasts. Would that be uh, more towards like the middle range, like week two, week three, or would it be like during um, week one while you're bleeding or what sort of, when is it a little bit easier for women to do longer fasts versus shorter? Yes. Yeah, so what I've heard is that when you're able to do a longer fast is actually, so if you think of your cycle as day one, day four through say seven, would be easier. And then day 15 to day 21. So those are for me, the days that, that I have felt like they're the easiest, Mm -hmm. definitely not the week before your period. (laughs) <laughs> Anything, you know. You know, there's, it's not always this dramatic, but there are some times or some months for me where all of a sudden my metabolism speeds up and I'm just hungry all the time. And it's like, what is this? Oh, okay. It's like, it's that week right before my cycle and my body just, it tells me you want more food, you know, and it's just, the, and sometimes it's wanting a little more carbs specifically, but it's really interesting. It's not um, the exact same every single month, but yeah, that is definitely a time I feel like where your body is going to shift a little bit and, and give you different signals. So let's um, answer one of the biggest questions I think that people have, which is what technically breaks a fast? Because um, I think different people have different guidelines on this. Some say, you know, you can drink coffee because it's zero calories. That actually helps suppress your appetite. You can extend a fast longer if you do that. Um, Don't put anything in it. Um, You know, what to you, is it coffee, tea? Does that count? Um, What what, what counts to you as breaking a fast? Yeah. So I think that one of the things I want to say is that I have seen people with the best results when they are doing a clean fast. And what a clean fast is, is that when you're having zero, a zero calorie liquid, but on top of that, you know, some of with nothing else added. So you, you want to stick with things like water, sparkling water, black coffee, black tea, herbal teas that aren't like fruit infused, you know, not even adding lemon slices or not even adding sweetener like stevia or monk fruit. So that's kind of, it goes back to, okay, that's like being where you say, I'm on a totally clean fast, right? Then there's kind of the next piece where people say, okay, well, if you add a little bit of cream or you add MCT oil or sugar-free sweetener or stevia, it's okay. And that's what we call dirty fasting because MCT oil or heavy cream, because it's not raising your blood sugar, they're saying that, you know, it's, it's fine. That's what we call like a dirty fast. And so the biggest thing is, is when you're, when you're, whatever you're adding in is 
is that going to raise your insulin levels at all? And so there are studies that have been done that sugar-free sweeteners can raise your insulin levels your initially. So it's yeah, and so it tells your brain basically that, hey, this is something sweet coming along and that gives you insulin secretion. Right. Which so, is actually bad yeah, because it's not actually sugar. So then where does it go? And it, it's almost like a worse problem than having a little bit of sugar in the first place. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, people say, well, can I have sugarless gum while I'm fasting? Well, if gum is sweetened with artificial sweeteners, which all of them are, then yes, it could trigger insulin secretion. Um, you know, sugar-free beverages like diet soda, which I wouldn't tell anyone, but my, you know, I wouldn't have my <laughs> enemy have that. Yeah. The whole um, what about BCAAs? I know some people do that because similar to the black coffee to um, get through longer fasts, maybe they do like bone broths or BCAAs, things like yes. that. Yes. So, so my, my suggestion is this, my suggestion is that you should do, you know, black coffee, black tea water and that's basically it that's that's like you're an a player right you if you want to get an a plus on the test right then if the, some people say okay well i'm gonna add you know this you know a teaspoon of mct oil it's like everything that you start adding it you kind of start going okay well now you're getting a b on the test now you're getting yeah. a c and and so forth but but here's what i suggest because I will say this, I know that I have had seen people who have had coffee when they're, they have a little bit of cream in their coffee. They're like, they'll look at me and they'll say, I'm not going to do fasting if you won't let me have coffee with cream in my coffee. Then I'm like, well, okay, well then have cream in your coffee. You know what I mean? So it's like, what I call it is crutch drinks. Like that's what I say in my book is that there's things that are like crutches where you go, okay, are you going to have training wheels or are you going to have crutches right now? Or are you going to be completely on your own? So when I do a longer fast, right? When I do a two day fast or a three day fast, that's when I'm implementing bone broth or water with lemon or water with a little bit of uh, lime in it or those kind of things that I'm just like, I'm dying on the vine. And if I don't, I feel like if I don't have something, I'm not going to be able to make it through. Bone broth is the best. Sometimes I'll take like um, a tablespoon of pickle juice. It's really the salt. What, what really keeps people from not being able to move forward on their fast can they start feeling really bad. It's their electrolytes and their salt. So I'll literally take salt and I'll put it in my hand. I'll take a pink Himalayan salt shaker. I go like this. I put it in my hand and I just lick. I literally go... <laughs> and I lick that and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm like a whole new person. But what's even better than that is a tablespoon of pickle juice. Um, I'll take a teaspoon or a tablespoon of pickle juice. Sometimes I'll take bone broth, fresh homemade bone broth that I make. Um, and then I'll take a couple tablespoons of that or, you know, just that's mainly what the problem is of why you just get to the point where you go, I feel so bad. And one of the things that people do that is such a big mistake that I've seen is they drink so much water. They drink so much water on their fast and it's not good for Watch them because out. yeah, if you, first of all, if you drink too much water, drink too fast, you're, you're risking diluting your your blood and you, you have faster excretion of water by the kidneys. And so, you know, it's just not good. You know, a the limit there, you know, we're told on a normal day to do half our body weight in ounces of water. So, um, on a fast, would you maintain that or go a little less? Just don't go over that. Or what would you say in terms of, I would say I drink when I'm thirsty. Like people don't realize that you can actually die from drinking too much water, but the, you can actually flush all of the salt out of your body and you can go into cardiac arrest. So if you're just literally you're like meals, what? But you're not eating meals during this process. So you're not replenishing that. So it would be, you know, a quicker process. I would think <laughs> drinking the water at that point would be more problematic than usual. Yeah. So my suggestion is, is that, you know, you drink when your body is thirsty, but do not just sit there and be like, I'm going to guzzle water, guzzle water, guzzle water. Because, you know, again, 
you are getting your body to the place where you're already going to be flushing out more water than normal when you're fasting. So then if, if you're getting rid of all that sodium in your, your body, that's why it's, it's such a problem. That's why I'm such a big proponent on getting that sodium in you when you're fasting. It's such a big deal. That's why the, the pickle juice is important and so forth. So something that's on people's minds recently with everything that's going on in the world um, is how we can improve our immune systems. So does fasting impact your immune system in a positive way? Yes. So the central benefit of fasting is a process called autophagy. And autophagy is the body's natural process of basically killing off or cleaning out or eating out all the bad cells that are built up in your body. And it's super important because you want to, but you're basically starving off many of the diseases that are in your body, right? And so that's why it's so, it's basically like taking all of your cells and it's regenerating your, your cells. And so during this time, like, you know, people are like, oh my gosh, I need to store up and store up more stuff. My, my husband, I have a funny story. My husband, we went to the grocery store and normally we don't go to the grocery store together. I have someone at the house that does all that. And he is like, I want to go to the grocery store together. This was like a week ago, you know, when everything was going on. So I'm like with my son and we're like in the produce aisle. And all of a sudden I'm like, it was like five minutes. I'm like, where's your dad? So I was like, I call him. I'm like, where are you? He's like, I'm in aisle three. I'm like, okay, I go to aisle three. And he literally has a, a bag of like ramen noodles, like to, to the top, <laughs> ramen noodles, Kraft mac and cheese, all this spaghetti, <laughs> rice, all this stuff. I'm like, what are you doing right now? He's like, we need shelf stable foods in case we can't get any foods. I'm like, okay, well, could you get like some organic non gluten? You know what I mean? Like we don't ever have that stuff in our house. He's like, I know you are fanatical about everything organic and blah, 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 blah. He's like, this is not the time to tell. He's like, I am stocking up on stuff that is shelf, shelf stable. And I was like, oh my gosh. So but, you know, everyone is kind of getting into that mode where they're like, okay, we need to get all this, you know, shelf stable stuff. But the truth is, and he goes, well, I already know you won't be eating this. You'll be fasting. If anything goes down, he's like, you're going to be fasting. And it's true, right? If, if things go down, I'm going to want my immune system to be, you know, working on overdrive. And that's what happens. People don't realize how much work it takes for your body to digest food. So imagine if it's not, your body's not working so hard to do all that digestion, it can go in and start fighting, you know, some of these cells and some of these illnesses to kind of regenerate those cells and protect your body during this time. So, um, I know some people, struggle once they start doing this and they'll experience some, some sort of side effects. I know I've heard people, um, randomly experience like acid reflux. Do you have any, um, why does that happen or things that people can do? So I think it may be a situation where they experience it once they start eating again, um, they get some acid reflux. So, um, do you have any tips on how to avoid that or any common side effects that people might experience? Yes. So what, one of the benefits of fasting is that it can, if you have, you know, your, st your stomach acid, that's what's happening. So fasting, you're saying people get heartburn, right? Right. So if you have, it's all about your stomach acid, right? And so everything with your stomach acid, if you're not eating, your lack of food could lead to a reduction in stomach acid. And sometimes it just, depending on the person, sometimes it's more stomach acid. So it just depends on what's happening. And so you absolutely need stomach acid because your stomach acid is what digests your food and it di destroys bacteria. So, so there's the side effects that I've seen with fasting is I've seen people who had their first time that they're doing it they ha have a disruption in their sleep because mm -hmm. they might feel like, 
oh my gosh, I'm so hungry, right? And so they're like, I'm starving. I'm not able to sleep at night. And so that's a big one that usually you're, when you do fasting, your sleep improves, but it takes time for your body to adjust mm -hmm. because you're taking time to adjust from getting your body into fat burning mode instead of into glucose burning mode. Mm -hmm. And so I would say- I ask you, um, just on that topic of fat burning versus glucose burning, you can't really do this successfully, I would imagine, um, if you are eating a lot of processed foods and high carbohydrate load during your eating window, because that would, I mean, you can, but I feel like you would suffer <laughs> during the fast because your blood sugar would be on a roller coaster and your body would be so used to these fast burn sugars and processed carbohydrates. So I would imagine that what would help you would even as a first step before maybe even you get into it, would be making that transition to less processed food, lower carbohydrate, more quality proteins and healthy fats. Would, have you seen a difference in that? Yeah, absolutely. Because if you think about it, like if, for example, I know, I know popcorn is a big one. Like if you, let's say someone just eats a ton of popcorn and then they're like, okay, I'm going to fast. And then what happens is their blood sugar jumps. And then once it starts coming down, they start feeling so bad. So that is definitely, I agree with that a hundred percent is just kind of really watching what, what are you eating yeah. in your eating window? But again, I eat, I eat good foods. Like I make sure that, but if I want a brownie, I'm going to make a homemade brownie. You know what I'm saying? What I eat, whatever my body tells me to eat, and so I don't eat a ton of sugar. I have a little bit when my body wants it. I cook with really great ingredients. I just don't deprive myself at all. And that's the, the, the thing with intermittent fasting is that you can, you can eat more of the foods you love because you're eating it in a smaller window. So I'm not saying anything about depriving, but I'm making choices that I know are, I'm going to feel good on because it's not just about, it's about deprivation as well. Like one of the things that I tell people is that they have to get out of the deprivation cycle. Um, and what I mean by that is if you think about it, the deprivation cycle looks something like this. You go, okay, I'm going to deprive myself. I'm not going to eat this or that. I'm going to restrict something. Then I'm going to, once I restrict it over here, I'm going to strive to you know, avoid being bad. And then, then you feel, then you're like, oh my gosh, I haven't had it. So then you want it. And then you eat too much of it. And then now you're back in that cycle again. 100%. So I just think that is super important to get yourself out of that deprivation mindset where you're not feeling deprived. Yeah. Because as soon as you do, you're, you're on this roller coaster of just, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm not going to have any of this. Then you feel deprived then you leads to a binge. Like, it's funny, I have this whole table at my house and we have all these snacks and they're healthy, like organic chips and just all kinds of stuff. And everyone comes to me and they're always like, I don't understand how you have all this stuff just laid out sitting here for you to eat at any time. She, my friend was, she was like, I would lose she, her exact words. She's like, I would lose my ever loving mind if I just had this staring at me all the time. And yeah. I said, oh, you need to read my book because see, I don't feel that way because I know I can have it when I want it. But if I'm not hungry, I'm not going to eat it. And I'm going to have it in moderation. I'm not there. There's never a time I'm ever binging on a, a thing of chips because if I want the chips, I can have the chips. Yeah. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. I work with my clients and, um, I say for myself, I can eat what I want when I want, as long as I make it with the right ingredients. So I have some overarching guidelines. And if I feel like having a brownie, I'm going to make a brownie that works within those guidelines, you know, and right. so I never, ever, ever feel deprived. I can have whatever I want. And so that really, absolutely that mindset helped me, I think long-term get off that that spiral, that, that binge and, and diet and binge and diet and binge and diet. And you specifically mentioned popcorn. I'm thinking women don't just eat popcorn. They eat popcorn with a glass of wine. <laughs> 
so it's it is totally having that that blood sugar effect immediately it's the two it's the two the sweet and the carb combined for sure um but yeah i think you're nailing everything in terms of you know patterns that we women get in and um, the mentality that we have to approach this with it's got to be a lifestyle it's got to fit within we have to get off that hamster wheel for sure or it's just not going to work um long term so um, what would you say if you had to pick maybe the top two or three, what are the top two or three benefits to fasting? Well, I think that the number one top thing is that you're never on a diet because diets don't work, right? We already know that 95% of people who lose weight on a diet will regain it back. And then two thirds of those people will end up at a weight higher than when they originally started. And so, you know, it goes back to the, that cycle again, because then they're, they're on that diet, they're feeling deprived, they are over, then they have an overwhelming urge to eat, then they binge, then they feel out of control and ashamed, and then they diet again to regain that control. And with this, you are never, ever dieting. You're out of that diet mindset. I can eat what I want. And I just know that I'm going to be doing it in this kind of window of time. So I would say that would be the number one thing for me is why it was so beneficial for me. And the second piece is that I'm never, you're, I'm never tracking my calories I'm never tracking my macros and did I eat this and did I eat that? It's, it's freedom. Like it's, it's a true freedom from food where you go, I'm not in bondage to food anymore. And that for me is the biggest thing that intermittent fasting did for me is that I, I, I can look at a plate of food. I can eat when I'm hungry and it, it teaches you true hunger because what happens is, is that people don't know what true hunger is because they've been in such a, a habit of eating every three hours that they don't even know what true hunger is. So when I eat my first meal, my stomach is growling. I, my body has gone all the way to empty. I know that I'm physically hungry. I'm not eating for any other reason. I'm not eating because I'm bored. I'm not eating because I'm tired. So, you know, one of the things I say is that I interviewed over a thousand women who have been naturally thin their entire life, okay? And intermittent fasting is one piece of the pie. It isn't the entire piece. It is a big piece. And it was the one piece that truly helped me. But I have about nine other principles in my book that I talk about that after interviewing these women, I, they just kept coming up over and over and over and over again, all these principles. And so that's kind of, you know, it's one piece of the pie. Mm, okay. That's right. And your book, you're talking about waste away. Yes. Awesome. So okay. then my fasting to freedom book is really um, about like, there's multiple reasons to fast besides losing weight. And so one of the pieces is losing weight. I talk about that in fasting to freedom, but it's also about there's other reasons to fast for spiritual reasons. So that's what that, that book is. And then I also have a Bible devotional book called, um, freedom from food. And that's a, a devotional that I have that kind of adds more of a, a spiritual spin on things. Oh, of why you should fast. Is that on your website? Yes. Okay. Awesome. So one last question, um, before we start to wrap it up, would you, is this something that you would say to people, Oh, just jump in and try it. Or would you say, no, 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 let's start off slowly. Let's, you know, don't, don't go into like a 24, 48 hour fast right away. Um, maybe start with the 16, eight, like what's sort of your guideline in terms of I've never, ever done fasting in my whole life. What do I do first? Yeah. So in my fasting, in my fasting book that I talk about is I give the analogy of a couch to 5k. So I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but couch to 5k is like a nine week running program. And what they do is they say, okay, if we can take just about anyone from literally doing no running at all, sitting on the couch to running 5k, a five kilometer run, and then they just have to do like 30 minutes and they just say, okay, well, you know, week one, you do one block and then you go to two blocks then you do a quarter of a mile. Right. And so I just really believe that's the right way to do it with fasting. So 
if, if I were you, I would start with an eight hour eating window. Most people should be able to do that. If you're struggling with that, then start with a 10 hour eating window, then move to eight hours. And I kind of describe that in my book of what the plan is, especially to do a longer fast. I have a friend of mine who's a thin eater and she's one of the people that I interviewed and I thought she's super thin. And she's like, I want, she's like, you've motivated me. I want to do a three day fast with you. And I was like, okay, let's do it. And she, she normally doesn't eat until two o'clock every single day. So she doesn't even start eating until two o'clock every day. So her eating window is like two to eight. She eats in a six hour eating window. But she does, she like, that's one of the things I'm telling you. Like when I interviewed all these thin women, they, she's like, I just, I don't really get hungry. She's like, I don't really get hungry until like two, one or two o'clock. And so she's like, I eat when I'm hungry, right? And so she, no, she, nowhere did she ever say, well, I do intermittent fasting. She just, that's when she was, you know, got hungry. She, her stomach started growling. That's when she got hungry. But she said, I want to do a, I want to do a three day fast with you. At 530, I think it was, she sent me a text. She's like, I don't think I could do it. She's like, I'm so hungry. And I was thinking, wow, I was really thinking more out of you. Um, so again, she, she needed to, she, she wanted to go from only doing eight hours a day or six hours a day, going straight into a three day fast and she couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And so what we needed to do with her is map it out and say, okay, we're going to start here. Then we're going to go here and, and move forward like that. Step by step. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for all these steps. I think it's really helpful to kind of introduce people and um, talk about some of the benefits and how, how you can, how you can make it work for you and your life. It seems like it's something that's definitely uh, doable regardless of lifestyle and schedule and, and, and something that, that pretty much everyone can incorporate and, and use and figure out what works for them. So can you share um, where people can find you, the names of your book, your website, and then is there any specific uh, piece of advice or thought that you'd like to leave people with? Yeah, I would say the biggest thing that I'd love to leave people with is I've seen people who have said something like, you know, the only thing that I, I heard one of my friends say to me one time, she said, the only thing that works for me is the Atkins diet. That's the only thing that will help me lose weight. And, you know, she had gained more weight than she had ever, last time I saw her, she's the biggest that I've seen her. And in her mind, she's saying, the only thing that works for me is the Atkins diet. And I'm thinking to myself, how can you even believe this lie? You are, she's about 80 pounds bigger right now than she's ever been. And in her mind, it goes, she's going to lose weight with the Atkins. And then what's she doing? She's gaining more weight Then she's losing. And then she's gaining and then she's losing. And then she's gaining. That is a lie from the devil that's telling her that this is the only thing that's working for her. Is it actually working for you? No, it's not. You're 80 pounds bigger than you've ever been. And so with intermittent fasting, the, the problem is I didn't lose any weight personally for three straight weeks, but I was like, you know what? I'm just going to stick with it because what happens with intermittent fasting is a couple things. Number one is that you build muscle. And so a lot of times you're, you might, your clothes will fit better, but your, you know, you won't maybe see the pounds. Mm -hmm. And there, there's another thing that I truly believe happens. It's called the whoosh effect. And it's, it's funny, but it's basically where all of a sudden, like I didn't lose weight. I didn't lose weight. I didn't lose weight. And then all of a sudden I got on the scale and I lost six pounds. Whoosh possible that I could possibly lose six pounds in one day. No. Right. And so if you have the whoosh effect, it's that when you start fasting, basically that, that fat cells re retain water. And so you basically start having water collect into your fat cells. And then all of a sudden, after a little while, the whoosh effect, if you stay on the, the intermittent fasting for long enough, your cells start to release all that water and fat that they build up. And that process is called the whoosh effect. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like whoosh, like, you know, the reason why it's called that is like the sound of the water leaving the cells, right? And so I just think, you know, what happens with intermittent fasting is you might lose and then you gain, you lose, you gain, you, and then it just, it goes down in a slow, gradual way. And I've seen people go, 
it just, it's not the fastest fix, right? And so you, some people, some people it does work faster, but for others, you just need to stay on that train a little bit longer and not get into, oh, I knew it was only, you know, Adkins that worked for me or whatever, and go into this going, you know what, I'm going to give it some time and it will work. So my website is ChantelRayWay.com. I've got three different books out and um, I have Waste Away. I have Fasting to Freedom and then I have Freedom from Food is my third one. So Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing and uh, helping my listeners kind of understand the process and uh, think about uh, incorporating some intermittent fasting into their lives. Awesome. Thank you so much.